Hi, this is Lauren from LSP Actions and today I'm going to discuss with you banding. What is it and how to get rid of it? You may have noticed bands or strips of colour in what is meant to be a smooth, undetailed area of your image. This can be quite alarming for beginners and at best a frustrating annoyance even for the pros. Banding is a form of digital colour posterization. That's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? It's most noticeable in solid areas of your image uh, that lack details, such as seamless backdrop paper for studio photographers, perhaps, or a clear blue sky outdoors. Banding is a digital problem that looks way worse on the screen than it will in print. I've enhanced the banding on this image here, uh, making it quite dramatic, so you can see that there. You might have noticed banding on your TV. Have you ever watched that, the opening credits on a Netflix film perhaps and noticed this weird colour banding too on your TV screen? This is down to your TV and the connection. Again, it's purely a digital phenomena. The effect is basically a digital rendering of the colour transitions between these pesky pixels when previewing a version of your image on the screen. It typically happens when a tone is graduated over several shades from dark to light or light to dark. So what should appear as a seamless and subtle transition, like this, will instead show us bands of colour that do not appear to blend well and actually stick out like a sore thumb. They don't look good. This weird colour effect is not typically there uh, to be seen in a raw image, which is your straight out of camera image, but it can become very noticeable very quickly when you begin editing, especially with the addition of gradients, uh, vignettes, colour changes, etc. The screen has to show you a digital rendition of your image and there will always be some compression and some artifacts showing, especially when you're working in JPEG quality and especially if this is in an 8-bit colour channel, which I'm going to chat about a little more in a moment. Any banding you see on your screen in Photoshop will not print anywhere near so noticeably, even if at all, because printing machines, printers, are less, um, they're much better able to blend colours together using inks in a much more natural and less noticeable way than the digital version. So reassuring as that might be, it isn't much comfort when you want to edit without the distraction of very noticeable banding, um, or if you want to share a digital image online, or send them to your clients for digital viewing perhaps. Although FYI, your clients are way less likely to notice it than you are. So how do we avoid banding in the first place? Well, first up, shoot in RAW. If you shoot in JPEG, the colours and the tones in the image will already have been compressed in the camera, if you shoot JPEG, your images may include digital banding even before you've even started to edit. Always shoot and work in RAW as this gives you a head start in editing. Work in 16-bit colour space. We have the option of working in 8-bit colour or 16-bit colour. Basically, an 8-bit file has 256 different colours available to your image, whereas a 16-bit has 65,536 colours available to you. This huge difference in quality means 16-bit doesn't compress the difference between the shades anywhere near as much as an 8-bit image would and can offer you much smoother transitions between these subtle colour changes. You may notice um, in Photoshop you also have a 32-bit um, option here. Don't choose the 32-bit. It is amazing, it is huge, the file size is ginormous, but this is for HDR, which is at high dynamic range images, and it's not needed for your standard portraiture for clients. Also make sure that you uh, save and work as a PSD or TIFF files. These are lossless um, images, rather than keep saving JPEGs and reopening them, um, because every time you close and save a JPEG, the file is compressed a little more from the original. So always work in a lossless image format, such as a TIFF or a PSD, until you're absolutely sure you're finished, and then you can go ahead and save as the JPEG. 16-bit images do have a larger file size, so if you wish to convert um, and compress down to an 8-bit at the end of your edit, you should be able to do this without noticeable banding, so long as the image is flattened and you've worked in 16-bit and kept the image um, in a lossless file, such as a TIFF or a PSD, right up until that last moment. So how can you tell if you're working in a 16-bit image? Well, first off, in Photoshop, Come up here to Image, Mode, and make sure it shows 16-bit. If it shows 8-bit, the banding will be a lot more noticeable. So Image, Mode, 16-bit. Another tip in Photoshop to diminish banding is to come up here to Edit, Color Settings, and make sure you've checked the Use Dither 8-bit channel images um, checkbox here. And while you're at it, have your workspace as sRGB, because that's best for clients, and hit OK. 
When you're changing the image mode over to 16 bits per channel, you may get an option that comes up asking you if you want to flatten your image. If you have layers open that you're working on, then make sure you hit no, that it won't flatten your image. When you're working in Adobe Camera Raw, let me just go ahead and drag this screen over. You can click here at the bottom. Um, you will see some image information here. You click here, it shows you the, uh, the color space and the bit depth here. So you click on this and you will get an option come up saying workflow options. Click the depth drop down here and select 16 bits per channel. And while you're at it again, if you want to, you can collect sRGB as a working space. And then you can go ahead and open that image or click done. In Lightroom, you'll need to come up to Preferences. You can find that on a PC under Edit. On a Mac, you need to click Lightroom um, and hit Preferences. On External Editing, make sure your file format is set as TIFF. Color Space, again, I've changed to sRGB. That's entirely up to you. And the bit depth here, most important, 16 bits. If it's set to 8 bits, make sure you change this to 16 bits. I also like to keep the resolution at 300. Once you convert to 16-bit, you will notice a slight difference in the banding, but it may not be a huge difference to begin with. This is because of several factors, but mainly because Photoshop is showing you a compressed working thumbnail of your image. But the banding will have improved, even if it doesn't appear so to the naked eye. Again, this is because of the image you're previewing, not the actual image data, which is the important part. So let me show you. Let's try this. So this image is in 8 bits. So I'm going to zoom in here to the banding area. And you'll see that even though we've zoomed in, you can still see this discrepancy in the colour tone here. This is, as I said, um, I've added extra layers in to really kind of enhance the banding here to give you kind of a very exaggerated uh, version of the banding. So let's zoom right in and you can still see that there. Now I'm going to change the image to 16-bit. And first off, it doesn't really look like it's made a huge amount of difference, but let's zoom in again. It just disappeared. Did you see that? It's there. Now it's gone because Photoshop is rendering the zoomed in image. So you can see that it's 16 bit. It has actually merged that banding a lot better. Banding will most likely not fully disappear until you've flattened your image and then you should see it really magically blend away a lot better. While you have um, different layers open in Photoshop, Photoshop is going to show you a clipped compressed version of your image, which will accentuate the banding. It's very tempting to never flatten an image in Photoshop, especially when you have lots of layers and if you're not perhaps quite so confident in your editing as you want to be. Many of us keep the layers open and then we'll go and save it as a separate JPEG there, never noticing the banding disappearing. But to watch the banding disappear in a 16-bit image, all you need to do, make sure you've finished your editing, right-click the background layer and click Flatten and the banding will disappear. Can you see? Let me just undo that. There it is. Flatten the image and Photoshop has gone ahead and compressed that banding down. If you don't like to flatten the image and you're really worried about losing the layers, then why don't you create a copy of the image and flatten that copy instead? You can do that by coming up to Image, Duplicate, uh, we can call it whatever the image is called, Copy, you can call it perhaps Flat. Open that and you'll notice it's opened up a brand new image with all the layers intact. You can go ahead and flatten that and save it as the JPEG up here, save as. And that way you have your precious layers over on another Photoshop image that you can save if you want to go back and edit more, which will also show the banding. And you have a saved version here um, where the banding has been diminished simply by flattening and saving the image. So here, for example, this uh, sky image, I'm going to change it over to 16 bits and then click flatten. And you will see the banding was greatly reduced. Maybe not 100% again, because we're viewing this on a computer screen. But compared to the image a second ago, it's really, really helped. So what if you've done everything, you've done all of that, and you still have a little bit of banding left? How can you cover that up? OK, so if you have some stubborn banding uh, left over from the editing process, sometimes there will always be a little bit there, and perhaps it really is in your image, but much more likely it's a compression issue or some kind of lost quality along the way. So here's um, some few tips of what you can do to help cover up that banding a little bit. You can add a Gaussian blur and mask this off. This can help with some banding, but it can make other banding types worse. It all depends on what's caused the banding in the first place, but it's worth a shot. 
So duplicate your image, come up here to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and bring the radius up until you see the banding disappear, and hit OK. Um, if you have a subject in your image, you're going to want to mask this away from the subject because your whole image is going to be blurry. So click the blur layer, add a layer mask, invert by hitting Control or Command and I so it goes black, it doesn't show anymore. Grab a white brush, so for example if this is a backdrop and your subjects are here, you can paint away that area of banding. Another way to get rid of banding, um, or to hide banding, is to add a texture. And this is my favourite way of removing the banding, and it's an instant result. Adding a fine art texture not only covers up the banding and any other little background errors you might have, but it will give your image a stunning fine art finish. You can download the Camden texture overlays here. Let me show you a quick one. The Camden textures also do come with an action pack you can use to apply the textures. So let's just find one super quickly, um, there we go. So I'm just going to very quickly change the blend mode to soft light, but if you use the actions that come with it, that'll be a lot easier. So I'm just going to place the texture in here, and this will add the fine art texture to the background without taking away from the image, it will actually add that fine art tone. So there we go, see before and after there, so you can cover up any background errors and paint the texture from the subjects there. Super easy, super beautiful, and aren't this family gorgeous? By the way, I love them all. Another thing you can do to reduce banding, which is very popular but not something I tend to do so much, is to, um, to add a noise layer in Photoshop. This is a very common thing you may see in groups, add noise to banding. Uh, to add noise in Photoshop, you need to create a new overlay layer filled with 50% grey. Sounds a bit daunting, but it really isn't. You come up here to Layer, New, Layer. On the mode here, select Overlay. Let's call it Noise. And make sure you check the box that says Fill with Overlay Neutral Colour. That's really important. And hit OK. Come up to Filter, Noise, Add Noise. And simply bring the amount up until you see the banding start to diminish a little bit. And hit OK. Again, you're going to want to add a mask to this and paint it only onto your background as we did with the Gaussian Blur. There, for example, like that. I'm not sure how well you can see that on the video recording, but it helps a little bit. Another way to reduce banding is to add a spatter filter in Photoshop. You can only do this if your image mode is in 8 bits. So if for some reason you have to work in 8 bit, you're not able to change over to a 16 bit and you really want to try adding some texture over that banding, you can try the splatter filter. Splatter? <laughs> splatter. First of all, to do that, you need to create uh, a new version of your backdrop, um, your background or your image, sorry. So first of all, you need to create a new layer. Don't worry about any of this, let's call it splatter. And then you need to select the whole image, hold down Command or Control C. Oh, sorry, Control or Command Shift and C. That will copy your whole image, and then Control or Command V. And this has pasted um, your whole image as a new layer. Come up here to Filter, Filter Gallery, choose Spatter under the Brush Stroke section. Let's zoom out just a little bit here. And you'll want to move the spray, you can see there's, um, in the preview here, you can see the banding. You're going to want to move the spray radius up until the banding disappears. You could possibly go even all the way up to 25. So just keep going until you see the banding disappearing. Keep the smoothness down, I would, and hit OK. And you can see before and after that has made a difference to the banding. Again, add a layer mask, invert, and paint this on to your image wherever you want it to show. For example here. So to recap, to avoid banding um, as best as possible, shoot in RAW, work in 16-bit colour, save as a PSD or TIFF file as you go until the last possible moment and then you can flatten and save as a JPEG. 
These are really the best things you can do to avoid banding um, as best as possible. And if you find you have a little tiny bit left when you're compressing the image and sharing on, uh, for an online client gallery, then embrace it. Remember, your clients aren't going to notice it anywhere near as much as you do, and it will not show anywhere near as badly in print. I really hope that tutorial helped you understand banding a little more and about how to tackle this in your edits. I'm Lauren from LSP Actions. Thanks for watching.